call. <laughs> Play nice. All right. So welcome everybody. Maddie KT here. We are episode three, season two, bow ties and bourbon. Today we're sporting the Riddler bow tie because Maddie KT has a lot of riddle me list Batman questions for today. So this season, lots of topics. We're packing it all in. We are back. We are in full force. Super excited about that. The topic of today is going to be the great, the sometimes underrated, the mainly misunderstood Mr. Mel Brooks himself and his work. I, along with my panel, we've got OG Steve with us again today. Cheers, OG. We got Dr. Tice with us again today. Cheers, Dr. Tice. I brought a beverage. Thank you. You did bring a beverage. And oh, you're welcome for that last video where I didn't cut you out at the end where you were like, I should have some bourbon. <laughs> I saw, I saw that. <laughs> that was almost I'm written. And I'm not a laugher. <laughs> that was almost <laughs> written. That one was classic. <laughs> So to everybody out there, if you haven't watched the last video all the way to the end, you missed out. Sorry. We keep most of the outtakes. That was a good one. <laughs> all right. So we had this discussion a couple of days ago because I had topics that were running through my mind. I wasn't sure where I wanted to go. And, and we landed on this one. And, and Mel Brooks himself being controversial now. And I preface that with now, because when we were children and teenagers growing up on his stuff, this shit was not controversial. It was funny. And, and Dr. Tice, you nailed it the other day when we spoke about this, which has been just reeling in my brain ever since. The only reason why this has become an issue or why all of a sudden the blazing saddles and, and types of content that he did like that are an issue is because some overprivileged, pompous ass white bread person with money, decided to sit back and tell other races what should offend them. And they got up on their soapbox and they tweeted and they did all this stuff. And probably because of the amount of money that they had, all of the friends in their group were like, oh, we can't talk against this person. You know what? Shut up. Who gives anyone the right to tell other people what they should find funny and what they should not find funny. And just because you have money and just because you have a huge following doesn't mean shit to the normal person, to the person who can think for themselves, to the intelligent beings that we are all supposed to be. Like, think for yourselves, people, honestly. Think for yourselves. Don't let other people tell you. And this is why I'm so mad about this right now. And I'm taking Blazing Saddles just because anybody who's ever seen Blazing Saddles, you know what it's about. You know the content. You know everything that there is to say. When I first watched this movie, the group of friends that I watched this movie with did contain, and I could say this without a doubt, and anybody who wants to question me privately about it, I had four different groups of ethnicity with me watching this movie. And everybody laughed their ass off. Why? Because it's funny. Because Mel Brooks put out stuff that was funny. Is it relevant today? We'll figure it out. I'm going to say at this point, because of 
Jenny Sue white bread, probably not relevant today because so many damn people have been told what they're supposed to be angry about that they can't think for the damn selves anymore. That's a society we've become, a society of followers, not a society of free thinkers like we should be. So I'm going to put you guys on the spot because I felt myself, oh, I felt myself sail in there. I, I, I saw it. So on the spot, and we'll just go in order of my screens. We'll go over to OG and then we'll get down to Tice. Um, I'm going to start with mine. And, and this is my true order. My top five Mel Brooks movies. And then we can discuss later why or we'll let this evolve to whatever it's going to be. So number one on my list by far, hands down, is Blazing Saddles. It was genius. I don't care what you think. I don't care who you are. It was genius. Blazing Saddles, top on my list. Men in Tights, number two. I know it's night and day, night and day, but reasons for it we'll go through later. Number three, which I think you guys might have been surprised, Spaceballs number three for me, and it wasn't higher up on the list. But it's still top five. Young Frankenstein is my number four. And I round out my bottom five. We've discussed all his other works, but, but for me personally, I round out my top five with History of the World. And I'm just going to say it as the group. I'm not going to pick one, like just History of the World. So, OG, what are your top five? We'll get into reasons later, but what are your top five? That's an easy one, man. First one, History of the World. Okay. Second, Young Frankenstein. Three, Men in Tights. All right. Four, The Directors. Ooh, okay. And, and five, I would probably have to go with Blazing Saddles. Okay. On sheer, con on sheer content of comedy. And okay. How it's All right, Dr. Tice, what do you got? What's your top five? Okay. Dumb question. Are we talking about Mel Brooks starred, produced, directed in, or? Doesn't matter. Your world. Okay. So number one for me, Blazing Saddles. I, I don't care who you are. We said this before. Farts yeah. are funny. And I still, you still can't tell me sitting around a campfire eating beans. Fart, people still talk about that 50 years later as the funniest scene in the movie. And I, I, I'm, I hardly disagree with them. Uh, two, Young Frankenstein. I'll go one. They can interchange depending on what the season is. I okay. could sit down. If it's on TV, I could watch either one of them. Yeah. Third, third one, History of the World. I like that as a whole more than the sum of its parts because it is it is um, a Mel Brooks movie, but he kind of loves to tweak with history and, and do some stuff with it. Four, I'll go with Spaceballs. Just because I think that one was the first Mel Brooks movie that was made for our generation, because it was right. something that we knew about. Whereas, you know, the Young Frankenstein and Blazing Saddles were our fathers with the, you know, the westerns and the Universal horror movies and stuff like that. But uh, number five, I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and uh -oh. it's a movie that he was in called To Be or Not To Be. Oh, he went yeah. there. All right. I, yeah. The only reason why I do that over the producers, which is a great movie of its own, it was yeah. just such a fantastic. You know, it, it was a comedy, but it wasn't a it was a farce comedy, but it wasn't anything like he had done before. And it was a smart comedy. It had it hit you in the feels some places. Yeah. And it was just, yeah. you know, even though he was only in it, you know, starring in it and produced it, it felt like one of his movies and it had his his handprint all over it. So yeah, okay. that would round out my top five with him. Okay. Although you, you really, you know, outside of life stinks and Dracula dead and loving it, you can't go wrong with Mel Brooks. Movies. Okay. I was going to say, I was going to say, I noticed that none of us had Dracula on <laughs> dead and loving it. <laughs> well, yeah. because if any of you guys would have said those movies, oops, there goes my internet connection. <laughs> well, that, that was more of a Zucker comedy than a Mel Brooks comedy, wasn't it? Nah, it was just it was a it was a sucky comedy. No, you know what? Movie. Come on, Terrible. just for Leslie Nielsen alone, can't we just give it the proper credit that it is due? You know, no, come on. 
No, it was awful. <laughs> One of my favorite, Leslie Nielsen, you know, even by Sorry, sir, I, I tried. It was unfunny. <laughs> One of my favorite Mel Brooks lines actually comes from that film. And they're standing over the dead body of the redhead that Dracula takes. And was it uh, Moriarty? Not more. That's Sherlock Holmes. That's Van Helsing. Uh, I'm sorry, Steve. Thinking of Van Helsing? The doctor that Van Helsing. Thank you. Yeah. And they're standing over the body, and he looks at the guy, and he goes, "She's Nosferatu." And he looks at it, and goes, "She's Italian." That's funny. It's good stuff. That's funny. It's good stuff. It's it's one of my favorite lines from that film, and that testament is to his writing and producing. It's even though it's not a great great movie, it still has speckled in. Right, Superb. but it's it's right. the same hack joke from Spaceballs. Druish? She that's part of Jewish. his, but you that's know, part I mean, of his handprint, just... like you said. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He had he had his own way of doing things, and yeah. and OG and I got to talk about this just a few minutes ago about like how many people Mel Brooks had with him, like producing, writing, like how many movies were Gene Wilder and Madeline Kahn in together of his? Like what, half of them at least. Yeah. And you know, he had like, then you take Men in Tights, all right? So you had, you had Carrie Elways, you had Tracy Ullman, you had Dave Chappelle. Chappelle. I mean, Chappelle. come on. And yeah. like with Spaceballs, John Candy and, uh, John Candy and Bill Pullman oh, and yep. Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis. Uh, they even nope. Joan, yeah, Joan Rivers was even in it. Mm -hmm. She did the voice, yeah. Right. So he had these well-known, well-established, I mean, Dom DeLuise. Like, Blazing Saddles, yeah. <laughs> and History of the World with Dom DeLuise, too. Oh, I don't. Yeah, he has some couple lines in that are kind of. Oh, he was he was the Roman emperor and. Uh, right. Yeah, he was Caesar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like, same thing with Gregory Hines in History of the World. Right. I forgot Gregory Hines. I'm so like. Mm. Yeah. Like and and then we discussed about with, um, Blazing Saddles and a couple of the other ones how Richard Pryor actually helped with the writing. So the Cleavon the, Little was just incredible. Well, and Richard Pryor was supposed to be in the Cleavon Little role, but backed out because right. I forget if it was he had another movie or his TV show was Running starting. Or was some, it, some, uh, he had Pryor commitments, but I, he had some, something that had where, where they dumped him in at the last minute. And Gene yeah. Wilder only got the role because he made Mel Brooks gentleman agreement to help him do Young Frankenstein. The, that same year so that was because yeah. another guy had dropped out of that role too and he said yeah well, i'll only do it if you help me get this other movie made and he was interested in it so it's a it's a very symbiotic relationship between those guys where they can just be funny and offend people at the same time right and and that's and that's the key word right there is it really offensive Eh, I mean, I'm Is not offended it? by it. But here's the thing. I would be, like, I, I've always told Steve this. I'm a big content versus intent. If in Correct. the context of a joke, if you're, you know, whether it be something as horrific as, you know, plane crashes or some, you know, if it's in the context of a joke, I can't get, how can you be offended? Because you're not coming at me full barrel trying to piss me off or to, you know, light a fire under me. I, I how can I be, offended? I could reserve the right to say it's not funny. Right. And that's not funny and being offensive are two different things. Right. Two different, and very different things. Yes. And that's where I am. And that's where my, everything is coming from. Like, I'm confused. I'm angry. I'm upset. Like, there's all of these emotions because, Mel Brooks now in this, oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to freaking say this on my own show in this woke 
society, who has the right to tell us that it's offensive? Like that part enrages me the most that somebody feels that they can tell me that I should be offended by a joke. I'm pretty sure I have free will here to do whatever I want to do. And if I think it's funny, it's funny. And if I think it's offensive, it's not because somebody told me it's because in my own world, in my own personal belief, I felt that it's offensive, but I'm not going to sit here and tell the two of you that you shouldn't watch a certain movie or you shouldn't watch a certain aspect of a movie because I found it offensive. I would expect one of you to punch me in the fucking face if I did something that stupid. And here's oh, the thing, no, no, no. Maddie. I have a, I, I'll hear Steve out, but I have a comment on that. Then. Okay. And it's like I said before with you guys at the round table, thinking shouldn't in, you know be an equation in this whole thing. If something makes you laugh, that's a spontaneous reaction. That should be something that you shouldn't have to be like, okay, let me pause. Let me reflect on this. Who could it offend? Who might it offend? What would my father think about this joke? No. If it's funny, it's funny. Right. When they shot Marvin in the face was horrific, but it was, oh, funny. It was brilliant. You know, that was why? brilliant, because man. Because it was the content of which it was delivered. It was brilliant. I will come to bat for anybody. Comedians, uh, stars on TV, if they come at me from a place of funny, I'll never get offended. I could be like, yo, that's not funny, but I'm not right. going to be there and say I'm offended or stop buying uh, Goya beans or whatever the hip thing is now not to buy anymore. I'm just, you know what? God bless it. I've been on this earth 48 years. What have I got to be offended about? I can literally sit there and judge and say, this is funny. This is not funny. This is something I like. This is something I don't like. You know what? Like I told Steve the other day, some people love vegetables and tell me that, well, cauliflower is the best thing in the world for it. I hate cauliflower. Are you going to ban me now because I don't like something that's healthy for me? Oh, that's it, buddy. You are unfriended. You got to right. love, no. gotta love <laughs> cauliflower to be my friend. You're bringing the hate on cauliflower, man? <laughs> I'm just spitballing here. Please do not. The views of Dr. Kais do not reflect. <laughs> he is only a doctor by title. <laughs> there, there are no nutritional facts behind what he has just said. Yeah. And Anyone like that intelligent said. can't not like cauliflower. <laughs> funny, here's the thing. You, you, funny is funny. No matter what. If it makes you laugh hey who's it hurting it's not taking food off of anybody's table you know it's not um it's not causing anybody any harm they're jokes they're the skits they're whatever you know that was the whole reason for comedy to make you forget about the horrors of real life right right to just sit there and enjoy it of your own free will free mind if you chuckle, you chuckle. If you belly laugh, you belly laugh. If you don't, and the person next to you laughs, well, guess what? They found that particularly funny. You didn't. You're not going to stop the movie because they laughed at something you did. You didn't. Yeah. Like, oh, gee, what do you hit me with your thoughts, brother? Hit me with your thoughts. I was just going to bring up, <clears throat> excuse me. You're a gamer, Matt, right? Correct. And you sit online and spend a lot of hours playing with other gamers. Yes. Most of them are younger than us. Most. Oh, absolutely. We'll give it an 85% on. Right. And you listen to gamers doing oh, yeah. what they do. That could be construed as offensive as F. Yeah. But it's still but it's still funny. Like right. I listen to these kids play these games and they'll say certain things or do certain things. But it's still funny. Yes. Yes. Right? 
and and I and I understand where you're coming from, and and I appreciate that point of view because that now brings it doesn't it doesn't tie Mel Brooks into today, but it brings it in the relevant it brings in the relevancy the of my the point the context. Yeah, the context there the are seven year olds playing Call of Duty right now, saying things that would make me blush. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Do I still laugh? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I do still laugh. Do I think it's offensive? No. Are there a lot of people yeah. out there thinking that's offensive? Yes. There's, I mean, that's big in the gaming community is how offensive and abusive and everything that it is right now because we've gained what, a million more gamers because of Corona and everybody being laid off or losing their jobs completely. And now they've turned to gaming. So now they've turned all their anger and <laughs> venom that's part of it that may be that may be part of it but also the the and i don't mean to turn the subject here but the part of gaming and this goes back to what we were talking about watching horror movies when we're you're with a bunch of friends the goal is to make each other laugh and have fun yes regardless of how offensive it could be you know and that's <laughs> right but the difference is with your group of friends And they have to be friends. Let's not get this twisted with acquaintances and people you know, bear like friends who understand you have your same sense of humor, sense of humor mentality. Those are the people. Yes, correct. They should not get offended by anything that you say because you're used to the humor of your group. So that's all. I mean, that's really. And, that t- and I think that ties in neatly to what Mel Brooks has always been able to do as a director. He can find that audience. That's why he always had to return actors and actresses because they all had that same sensibility. Right. You know, Terry Garr in Young Frankenstein was hysterical. You know, but. When was the last real good comedy role you ever saw her do after Young Frankenstein? Mel Brooks had the the vision to see the comedy in the character. Right. Right. And that's, I think that's a testament to his writing and his choice of uh, character selection. All right. So for this panel, just with us, are we, are we in the same agreement that, Mel Brooks is funny and not offensive. Yeah, absolutely funny. Funny, pure funny. Okay. So I still recommend his movies to anybody that I talk to that I think would be able to enjoy them and not be offended by them. But then again, at the same point, I really don't hang out with people that would be offended by something like that because, um, those people are boring to me. Unintelligent drones that walk around listening to everybody else will never be part of my inner circle because they are the most boring people to have a conversation with. It's not intelligible. They just speak what everybody else says. They don't have these thoughts and ideas that creative, intelligent people would have. Am I calling all of them dumb? No, I'm not. I'm just merely saying... I don't like sheep. Sorry. Well, I don't, well, I don't like Steve, but I keep him around. Pay me. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I was there all weekend? <laughs> Tell my Stop, name right give, me, give me that one, man. Come on. That was, yeah. that no, was you a got it. You were there to wash my dirty underwear, so I appreciate that. All right. yeah, so, right. Dr. Tice. I'm going, to give, I'm going to give a closing thought for you to knowledge, knowledge us with. Okay. So we, we began with the question, is Mel Brooks, should Mel Brooks still be relevant today? Dr. Tice, yes Absolutely. or no, and why? Absolutely. He laid a groundwork for comedy. And I'm not just talking in the movies. 
I'll go back even further. If anybody's watching this and if Google isn't shut down, do yourself a favor. Check out Sid Caesar, your show of shows. The show of shows. I was I have that on my notes, man. I have it on my notes. Check out Carl Reiner and the 2000 year old man and just listen to the improv and where it's it's really just comedy you don't see anymore you don't it, it's not offensive you know it's not it's funny and even if it was offensive it would probably still be funny there's just there was one line that that it still cracks me up to this day and he's like oh you're the 2000 year old man you know how many children do you have Forty two thousand, and they still don't come and see me <laughs> boom and then he goes on to the next joke and yep. he doesn't even give you time to oh man my children really don't come and see me no it's just boom kick you in the shin and walk away it's it's funny it's you know it's for brilliant. people who grew up it's with the brilliant. dumbers or the caddy shacks or the slob comedies or stuff like that this is a good way to kind of reset your brain and be like okay this is this is funny it's smartly written no shit jokes no screwing apple pies nothing of that sort you just have two guys, smart dialogue funny and it doesn't come at you rapid fire you know like what Frasier or Modern Family you know where you have to sit there and process the joke or anything everything everything is just right there in your face funny still relevant to this day and at 95 he's still a presence no okay funny. all right OG two minutes what do you got for us same topic Steve brought up show of shows go back and watch that writing it is beyond brilliant. Um, he has the ability to laugh at himself in his movies as well. And to me, that's intelligent. You cannot, people that don't think things through, maybe have a harder time to process comedy or horror. Like I'm learning a lot with watching movies with Steve. Right. But give it a chance. Think it through and figure out your own opinion on it. Your own, thank you, your own opinion. And that's, yeah. and that's, yeah. that's key. That's key. And that's why w with all of our other opinion pieces, that's all we're doing. We're giving our opinions. I'm not telling anybody what they should or shouldn't do. What I will say is, hey, if you haven't watched it, give it a try. If you've watched it once and you didn't like it, good. But at least you tried on your own and you looked at things. And that's how we progress as human beings. Like, try things. Yeah. Don't shy away from everything because of what you hear or what's going on. Be your own person. And I hate to say this. And like I said, I'm going to veer off into serious territory. The fear of being canceled and the fear of being judged for what you say has taken dialogue off the table. And that's a sad thing because you can't just sit there and have healthy yeah. debates anymore without you're a racist. Why are you laughing at this? This is not funny. This is it. No, that's what being an individual is all about. And it's yeah. just the the healthy dialogue isn't there anymore. It just sure. turns into dysfunctional family Thanksgiving. Every time people want to come and talk about stuff. Yeah. It was just like, as much as Steve hates me, he knows I'm right most of the time. And we can have healthy dialogue and do these things. All right. You know, you're right. Just to have another drink. It's OK. All I'm right. just saying. That's, fa that's fair, Steve. It's, it's, it's <laughs> accurate. All right. But no, it's, this is dialogue. Yeah. And the more dialogue we have as people and as a human race, get it out. Talk about it. There wouldn't, there wouldn't be so much friction in the world if people would stop swallowing their opinions and just put them out there, right, wrong, or indifferent. Find out what the other guy is thinking and then work through it. Talk about it. Is right. that fear? That's anything. It's anything, yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's why I'm saying that this new season is going to be quite a shocker to some people. Because I have let the filters go. We are our individuals. We are going to give our opinions on this. And as I have said many times, you can take them or leave them. 
but watch the entire show, listen to all of the dialogue, and don't just take what you see in the beginning of our videos as what the video is actually going to turn into. Because it does. It through dialogue, does. many things change. But I'm super excited about this episode. I'm super excited about the season. I would like to thank you guys again for joining me. Everybody out there, the next episode is actually going to be a cooking episode. <laughs> so um, if you're into that, I'm going to keep things just smooth. We're just going to call it the next episode and move on. But I will be making peppermint bark brownies in case anybody wants to catch it. They will be gluten free, of course, for my wife because they need to be. And I have to listen. So. And I have made homemade New England clam chowder tonight. This so, guy, New England clam tonight. chowders. So I am Maddie KT. Thank you, thank you, thank you for enjoying this episode with us. Please subscribe. Please leave comments. We love the feedback. OG, say your goodbyes, sir. Mel Brooks is awesome. Go watch his films. Make your own decisions. Stay metal. He had a blip That's in the matrix nice. there. We had to reboot him. <laughs> Give us your <laughs> phone. As always, Give peace and love. It. Even if we disagree, we're all in this together. Peace and love. That's right. <laughs> Everybody, enjoy yourselves because we enjoy entertaining you. So until the next time, cheers. Cheers. Cheers all.